Okay. So again, I'd like to welcome Dr. Hassan Ghani from the uh, MSU Biosystems Agriculture Engineering. Um, he has a few slides for us talking about um, different ways to identify problems in tile drainage. And I think that's on a lot of our minds right now because we've been getting that rain that uh, Jeff Andreessen has been promising. Um, and so following uh, Asan's presentation, we'll get Jeff Andreessen to give that weekly update and forecast for the weather. Madeline, so would you go to the next slide sharing. for us, please? Oh, yeah. Let's see if I can do that. Okay. And then first, uh, please make sure you're muting yourself during the presentations. That hasn't isn't usually a problem. Um, and then make sure at the end that you're signing in with your first and last name. So this is, you can go to the participation list icon on Zoom, uh, find your name and then click on it and change that to your first and last name. And this is really important if you'll be getting your RUP or CCA credits at the end, that's how we um, uh, take attendance and make sure that you're getting your uh, credits. And then at the end, we will be going through uh, questions. So any questions that you have, just put them in the chat box. If you don't want to put them in the chat box, just stick around and um, you can ask them in person. Here we go. I will stop sharing. I think. There we go. Good, good morning, everyone. Welcome to this webinar this morning, this summer day. I'm going to be talking about identifying and correcting drainage underperformance issues. And uh, like Madeline mentioned, uh, my name is Esan Gane. I'm in the Department of Biosystems and Agricultural Engineering, and I work with extension. So let's get started. So before I talk about underperformance, I'd like to show you uh, a profile view of a uh, soil with pipes, tile pipes inside under the ground. And you can see those are the circles. Imagine you're looking through this and those are the two pipes and that's the restrictive layer. And imagine a heavy rain comes, then you got a ponding condition, then those pipes are gonna work. They are gonna take the water away. And this is how it's going to happen. As you can see, this is a, a real situation that, that this is how it happens when the, as the water table starts to move out. So to describe this, the first place that dries is the top of the pipe. You already know that. This is one way to locate a tile on the farm if you don't have a map. Because, because it's driest over the pipe, Usually, in, in some cases, the crop grows better there. So you can see it in your yield maps. Or visually, you can actually see it on the farm as well in some cases. So you, you, just, to know, just so you know that the top of the pipe is driest. And as I showed you, midway between the pipe is where we actually uh, design our drainage system to work properly. And what we talk about is gonna be for that midpoint, midpoint between the two pipes. Because why? Because that's most of the farm. The area above the tile is very small portion of the whole farm. So that's why we talk about the areas not above the tile because those are already dry. So let's, let's talk about a little bit about those issues. So if you're looking at it, the whole farm, at the whole farm all together, what we want to see is that we want to lower the water table to one foot depth below the surface in less than 48 hours after heavy rainfall. Ideally, when we design it, we're looking to be close to 24 hours. But when you get to above the 48 hours to drop the water table to one foot depth, then that's a sign of underperformance issue. And again, remember, we're talking about midpoint between the two pipes. We're not talking about above the pipe. It's the midpoint. Another one, again, for the whole farm is that over the course of the whole growing season, you want to have a water table that's on average about two feet deep. 
over at least 90% of the farm, over at least 90% of the growing season. So that's what you want to do. But how would you do that? This really trickles into the yield, really, because measuring these things may be a little bit unfeasible. Um, but if, you, if you're looking at your yield and you see that, oh, you got a little bit more to go to reach your potential yield, then that's a sign. And your potential is, is your, your yield, your best yield that you'll have without those stresses. For example, the water, too much water stress. So that's something that you would find there. But if you're looking at part of the farm, not the whole farm, but just part of it, for example, you're looking at the farm and then you see a spot there that historically in the past, it was dry. And all of a sudden from this se spring season onwards or this fall onwards, then you see water standing that it wasn't there before. That's a sign that there could be a pipe clogging, there could be soil compaction, or there could be just a pipe clogged uh, or outlet blockage. So, you know, the whole farm and part of the farm. So let's get into some examples. So as you know, um, this is our friend, Joe. And if, if you have those underperformance issues, as I mentioned, you will get low yield in certain areas like this part of the farm. So let's start with the first one. The first one is, is called under designing the system. So to explain what this is, is that in a drainage system, you're gonna have a lateral tile drain pipe. This lateral tile drain pipe is either three inch or four inches. And the, uh, the purpose of it is to move, to drain water from the soil into the bad pipe. That's the whole idea of that lateral drain pipe. Then there's another pipe called the main pipe collector. This main pipe, the, the whole purpose of this is to move the water away because water from the lateral moves into the main and the main it just carries it away. That's the purpose of it. So one underperform under design problem is that the diameter of the main is too small and that's done during the design process. So when the diameter of that main that is moving water away is too small, what happens? You have a bottleneck. What happens is that water that enters that pipe, water enters the pipe faster than the main can carry away. So you could, you could have spent 500,000 or a million dollars on the narrowing your splitting your laterals, spacing in half, going to maybe 10 just, uh, or 15. But if that main size hasn't been evaluated, you may be getting the same performance as you got when you had like 30 feet spacing. So that's very big. I have seen these issues, under design issues. I have seen it, I have experienced it, I've heard about it. Um, so to identify this, the identification of this would be the whole farm as a whole. It's not just the one part of it, it's the whole farm. You will see that in, into the yield that you will get lower. So it could do better. You will feel that, oh, my drainage system could do better. I, I spent so much into a narrow spacing. All This is all I have, this is a, um, I have a video um, QR code, please scan this. This would show you physically in, in real life, it will show you how this will cause a problem. I'm, I promise you, you'll enjoy this video. Another one is you may have, la the spacing may be too wide, maybe too wide, but how would you know what spacing is good? We at Michigan State, we have a drain spacing tool that will tell you the drain spacing that will maximize profit. That's all we want. We care here is that we wanna maximize the profit so that we get the best return on investment with that tool. Um, also, you don't wanna to go too narrow. So the solution to all of these underperformance is not just going narrow. So there's some cases that you could do other things, but you, you need really to check with, this is a very user-friendly tool. Anybody can use this. It's very easy, it's online. Um, uh, but in terms of the first item that I mentioned, the under design, we have a drainage workshop coming up in February 27, 29 of 2024, where we actually talk about contemporary concepts to increase profit with what we teach. So more of it will come in more of the, if you're interested in more of those topics, will come into this workshop. Oh, and this is the QR code 
um, for registration of that workshop. Another underperformance is that we, we have to make sure we are maintaining the drainage system. One of the places, very important places, is the outlet. It's very important that it's not blocked. If there's debris, there's a big, uh, the ditch fills, fills with water and there's something um, obstructing the outlet, that needs to be taken care of. We want that to be free flowing. So prevent any outlet blockage, that's very important. Also make sure you have these rodent guards, uh, otherwise that would cause a blockage. And that blockage of the outlet, and I've seen this one also here in Michigan, it would cause um, tile blowouts, which is the next underperformance issue. And this tile blowout is basically means that you have a sinkhole over the pipe somewhere on the farm. And that's because, and this is a photo, the one that I told you that I saw myself in Michigan. And you can see it's a sinkhole right above the pipe. So what it's important here is that you got to repair that. Just don't let it stay like this because gradually the walls of that are slowly going to cave in more and more. It's just going to just come in. Soil is going to erode and that pressure soil is going to go out into the ditch. And we don't want that. And the cause is high pressure in the pipe or high water velocity, that's another case that, we'll, that I talk about in the drainage workshop. For here, high pressure comes from blocked outlet, which I mentioned the rodent, or that's why you need to have the, the grad guard and also clogged pipe. It could be um, root clogging or sediment clogging. So for this tile blowout, basically this is how it starts. Pressure builds. Some of the soil, water comes out, but it, and then when it comes back in, when the rainfall uh, after the flow recedes a little bit, then it takes the soil inside the pipe. And you can see, as I click here, you can see it's creating um, a sinkhole. This graph is from University of Wisconsin. It's an excellent graph. Another one, another way that the pipe would get blocked is root clogging. This is a photo of one of those root cloggings that could happen. Generally, annual crops generally do not pose any risk for root clogging. Why is that? The reason is the annual crops, some of the roots really do get in into the pipe, but those are very young and very weak roots that they get into the pipe. And when they get into the pipe after the crop is harvested in fall, um, or other times, the, the roots die and then they slowly just get detached. They get into the, they fall into the flow of water inside the pipe and then they get carried away. So it will not cause a clogging with generally these annual crops. But the issue that could cause even with annual crops is that if you have an off grade dip or hump in the pipe, and I'm showing in this graph an off-grade dip in the pipe. As you're installing it, this has to be uniform grade. So as it's continuing with the same grade, but if it's a dip like this, water will be sitting there and that's the place the roots want to come to. And that could potentially cause root clogging. Another one is improper connection. So when you connect a lateral to a main pipe, if that connection isn't done properly. For example, tap T goes into the pipe and then the connection isn't done properly. Then if the obstruction that is caused, the obstruction is just a piece of the pipe coming further into the pipe that could just hold on to those moving roots. And then it would gradually just build up, build up to be become really large. And then it could cause a clogging. So these are, these are installation and design. In terms of radish roots, we've heard about that a um, lot during the 2019 preventive planting season. And the reason was that because of that 2019 preventive planting season, the, you know, if they, the radishes were planted early, um, let's say in June, and it, then we're giving the radishes a lot of time to grow and that could potentially cause root clogging, yes. But typically late August or early September, 
the radishes are going to the ground, they get planted, and then they die, die when it gets cold in winter. So it doesn't have time to grow, to grow too much to have any risk. So that's the story with the radishes. Well, how to identify, if you have something like this, uh, this would be, like I mentioned earlier, this would be part of the farm that would have a problem. So a robotic pipe crawler, this is a photo of it, or a pipe camera, these are the ways that you can identify. So I suggest you hire, there are companies who can do this for you and they can actually send these uh, into the pipe and identify these problems. The sediment clogging is another one. Um, this is when the fine sand and silt enters the pipe and because, uh, because it's heavier, it will just build up over time. For this, you, you gotta have to use a saw crab pipe or a sand slot pipe. The sand slot pipe has a narrow slot to, to, avoid, to prevent the sand from moving into the pipe. Also avoid connecting ladders to the bottom of the main pipe. And again, the same thing as I mentioned for the root, avoid off-grade dip or hump or improper connections because they create an obstruction and they could hold on and start to build sand. Um, and this is a photo from my colleague, um, Will Ward, of that sand clogging. Because in this photo, they had used a regular perf pipe, where they should have used uh, another, the saw crap or the sand slot pipe. Soil dispersion is another one uh, that is very important. Um, dispersion would basically, the soil will disperse, and then the soil structure would be destroyed on the surface and then it would seal. That's another way that you will have underperformance and you could have water standing in some parts of the field. And that is caused by mineral imbalance, too much sodium and magnesium. What you would do is that you would need to add some calcium to it to make, to make that imbalance into a balance. So adding a calcium improves the soil property and research shows that gypsum improves the soil aggregate stability that helps water moving down. And also raindrop impact is another one that creates a soil dispersion. You need to protect the soil with cover crops, crop residue, mulch, but there still has to be something on that surface because if it's just a bare soil, like the photo, that raindrop impact, depending on the intensity, would destroy those structures on the surface and create a ceiling. Because like I mentioned here, cover absorbs the rain for, raindrop force and reduces the soil dispersion. Last one is soil compaction. This is a common one. I would say this is very common. I hear a lot about this one. And this compaction, basically compaction could be at the soil surface, plow pan or subsoil. And if you have more clay, you're gonna get more risk of compaction. And if you have more sand, like a sandy loam soil, you will have less risk of compaction. And so if you have this issue, then you will need to break that uh, compacted layer with, with the tillage, subsoil layer, subsoiler, or a mole plow. Mole plow is another one of those really cool ways that you could do that. There is information on the web, on the drainage website of Michigan. More information for mole plow. Basically, what happens is that the fieldwork occurs when the soil is wet, and then the soil gets compacted. But so I would say avoid those field works during when the soil is wet. Otherwise it's gonna compact the soil and it doesn't matter if you have the world's best drainage system, water can't really get to the pipe, the tile pipe. Another one, uh, reduce the tire pressure, have traffic control go on certain pathways and have larger surface area for the tires. Those would help reduce the pressure on the soil. And so these, what I mentioned, like avoiding uh, the sub tillage, those are just temporary, you fix it, but you don't wanna do the tillage all the time. You wanna have, a, in terms of the long-term solution, you wanna have improve the soil health with regenerative agriculture, which would mean having minimum or no soil disturbance, permanent cover crop and diverse crop rotations, because these improve uh, the soil, improve the soil structure, and when the soil structure improves over time, you're gonna get better infiltration and reduce surface runoff. And then water is gonna reach the pipe faster. So this is very important to have that. And last slide, um, next week would be our farm drainage field day. We'll have more 
topics about these and control lineage statute buffers and live demonstration coming up next August 8, 9. And this is the registration link. Thank you for your attention.